And now, the origins of Mint. Mint is actually part of the Lemiaceae family, which is known commonly as the Mint family. But officially, it's under the genus Mintha. Now, it's currently believed that there are about 30 different species of mint. That's right, mint music lovers. This special mix album contains every mint song you know and love. For only $18.99, you too can own this special mix album. Get swept away by songs like Incense and Peppermint, Macho, Macho Mint. Go to your mint idols, call 1-800-555-MINT. That's 1-800-555-MINT. Or send $18.99 plus $3.50 shipping and handling to Mint Idols. Mint originated in the general vicinity of Northern Africa and Southern Asia. However, it was found in its greatest abundance around the Mediterranean region. In the Ebers Papyrus, mint is listed as a useful remedy to calm stomach pains. Ancient samples of peppermint were found hanging out in the burial chambers of Egypt. And peppermint oils were considered so valuable that tomb raiders would steal the canopic jars that the pharaohs were buried with. In fact, mint was used as a form of currency in ancient Egypt. And it wasn't just the Egyptians that found mint so valuable. In fact, in the Bible, the Pharisees are listed as paying their tithes with mint. But apparently, according to the biblical passages, they were skimping on their tithes if they paid only in mint. But that's not mint's fault. It's because they were skimping on mercy, faith, and justice. Let's move over to the ancient Greeks and Romans. Well, they used it in ways you would expect, like flavoring their drinks, giving their fruit compote a little pizzazz, freshening their breath. Good and even giving their baths a refreshing kick. They also used it in a few more peculiar and fascinating ways. The Greeks would use mint to clean their banquet tables and they would spread it in between stepping stone pathways and in the courtyards of their homes in order to welcome their guests with its pleasing scent. And in so doing, they were considered to be showing the utmost civility to their guests. The ancient Hebrews did something similar by spreading mint on the floors of synagogues in order to make them more appealing to people. According to Pliny the Elder, the Romans would crown themselves with peppermint wreaths. Why? Because it looks really cool. No! I mean, clearly, these wreaths, like, stimulated both the mind and the soul and your brain. Sidebar! Whenever mint is simply called mint, without a qualifier like apple mint or pineapple mint, the mint they're actually referring to is spearmint. Double sidebar. Mexicans actually call mint yerba bueno, which officially means the good herb. Yep, good herb. Mint batal! According to both Pliny the Elder and Hippocrates, mint actually discouraged sexual intercourse. But, according to Aristotle and the rest of the Greeks, it was a high-powered aphrodisiac. One, two, three, four, I declare a mint war! I knew it. Now Aristotle was actually the tutor to a young guy named Alex, who must have really revered his teacher and taken his lessons to heart. Because when little Alex went on to become Alexander the Great, he believed, without a doubt, that peppermint was a big time aphrodisiac. So much so that he forbade his armies to use the powerful leaves or oil in any way, for fear that it would get his men so hot and bothered that they would lose their desire to kill. Little Alex may have had some trouble with peppermint, but the Romans sure didn't. They took it with them everywhere they went. And by the time it shows up in the Icelandic pharmacopoeia, it had been established all across Europe. You think mint toothpaste is a new thing? Think again, baby. There are records showing it as being used as a toothpaste and teeth whitener as early as the 14th century. And during the Middle Ages, monks were known to use peppermint as a tooth polisher. It was also around this time that cheesemakers figured out that the strong smell of peppermint would keep rats and mice out of their storerooms. 
William Turner, who is known as the father of British botany, believed that it was good for ye stomach and is pleasant in sauces. Nicholas Culpepper, a physician astrologer who also fought in the English Civil War, luckily he was on the winning side, he suggests that mint should never be given to a wounded man because it will prevent his wound from healing. Which is strange, because Culpepper also used mint to treat almost 40 different ailments. According to English traveler John Jocelyn, mint made its way over to North America thanks to the English settlers in the early 17th century. Hold on there, Johnny boy. Because when these settlers first arrived, the indigenous American Indians actually knew about the importance of mint. But he is kinda right. Because the settlers actually did bring new species of mint over, like peppermint, that the indigenous Americans didn't actually know about yet. Fun fact! Did you know that it wasn't actually until 1696 that peppermint was classified as its own species? However, most historians actually believe that the mint mentioned in most historical texts is actually peppermint and not spearmint, which is actually the default species of mint like I mentioned earlier. Why? Because people are kooky. That's my scientific explanation. Heading into the 18th century, we find the first commercial peppermint production established around Mitcham, England in 1750. And the English ruled the roost for a long time until the 1800s when the Americans got involved in peppermint production. This was followed by the Japanese who started their own mint production around 1870. However, they grew their own variety which is called Japanese mint, which is in fact different from peppermint. But it was the Americans who ended up dominating the peppermint and spearmint markets. Until 2017 when the worldwide leader in mint production turned out to be Morocco. What? Morocco? What? Where the heck did they come from? Wait, nope, actually now it's India. What the heck is going on? Let's clear this up for you. Well, the United States still leads the world in spearmint oil production, the numbers on everything else minty are changing drastically. Over the last 10 years, the worldwide leaders of mint production have shifted between the United States, Japan, Morocco, and India, with China, Bulgaria, and even Argentina in the mix. But regardless of whoever is currently winning the mint production race, peppermint oil is now the most highly produced essential oil in the world. And there is a massive list of things peppermint oil can be used for, including GI tract issues, ADHD, motion sickness, muscle pain, headaches, chronic fatigue syndrome, colds, stress, acne, sunburns, and so much more that it leaves no doubt as to why people love and use peppermint oil more than any other essential oil. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe, clickety click that like button, and share with your friends. My question for today is, how do you like to use mint? Personally, I'm a big fan of minty teas, chocolate chip mint ice cream, and uh, I actually will just eat those mint leaves raw. Please let me know your choice in the comments down below. Until next time, be kind to each other. And please, don't forget to spread that mint over your walkways.